My name is Lexi, otherwise known as Black Girl Mage, and I am here to break down The Light of Xerixis, an adventure for a fifth level party. This is an adventure that's broken up into four parts, and hopefully you'll be able to complete the entire adventure in a span of 12 or so sessions, depending on how fast you make it through the Astral Sea yourselves, and also your session length. Let's talk spell jamming, and let's dive on in. In the first part of this adventure, Seeds of Destruction, your player's hometown, or wherever you decide to start this story, is experiencing a pretty normal day, except for a meteor shower that had happened. Some people think it's celestial, some people think it's just a meteor shower. But this is where our adventure will begin, as your players find out that those stars falling from the sky were actually astral seeds, and they both plunge into the earth feeding on the energy at the center of the earth while also helixing into the sky, reaching to impossible heights. Your entire town is thrown into chaos and your players are gonna have to make a decision. Are they gonna barricade themselves in the tavern? Are they gonna run away? Or maybe they will follow one Captain Elena Sartell who steps forward and tells them they ought to run away and that she has a ship down at the docks if they'd like to take her up on it. When they arrive, Captain Elena will need a bit of help clearing some thugs that have decided to overtake her ship, the Moon Dancer. But if they clear that out, she'll take the players and 60 other civilians that are gathered around the docks to the skies. After making a swift escape, Wild Space welcomes you and Captain Elena reveals she personally has no clue how to get rid of these astral seeds, but she knows someone who does and decides that your path is perfectly set for the Rock of Brawl, where she acts as a privateer. Her resident spell jammer, a flump named Flapjack, will start their engines as the two of them will start to make their way for the Rock of Brawl. If your players are curious about the ship and its properties, make sure you have your Astral Adventurer's Guide with you. Players can now take a short rest. All that commotion had to have been exhausting. Make sure that they have some downtime, that they can ask some questions to maybe Flapjack, because they will need their energy. Because off in the distance, a hostile ship has taken the horizon. It's the Astral Elves and their crew, all on a ship called the Dark Star. Make sure to brush up on your ship-to-ship -ship combat and get ready to roll initiative. During and after combat, your players can get some information from those Astral Elves. Just make sure that they understand these few things. One, that the Elves are definitely responsible for the Astral Seeds dropping onto their home world. Two, that the destruction of their world is imminent and inevitable. And three, their leader is Vale of Xerixis Space. Their ships are carrying hundreds more astral seeds, and there are several ships that were hanging out but are all headed towards their home system. Once again, your party may or may not handle this elf problem, but don't worry, you've got options. If they do, you're on track with the information needed to get to the Rock of Brawl. In the next part of the adventure, your players will see a nautiloid ship that looks to be abandoned, except it's actually overtaken by Sirlon Ringers who have sent one of themselves disguised as a helpless pirate to get help from the players and Captain Sartell. What your players don't know is that these Sirlons were left for dead by Neojai, and they're really hungry. You're about to enter an exploration part of the adventure where your players will go through different rooms and fight Sirlon ringers, of all things. The second that they're done, make sure you level them up because those Neojai that left them for dead were waiting on an opportunity to ambush the captain and the ship. Once they leave the Nautiloid ship, you will see a ship called the Night Spider that actually puts up a really, really good fight for a couple of rounds before two galleons appear, the Stalwart and the Incorrigible, who are led by the Githyanki buccaneer Darvik, who knows Elena and asks to escort everyone to the Rock of Brawl. Finally, you are on your way. Landing on the Rock of Brawl means that Captain Sartell is going to wish your party well and they will part ways, but she will send them towards the Happy Beholder to meet a gift soldier named Commander Crux, who has experience with the Astral Seeds and also the infiltration of the home world. When the players begin to tell him their story, he'll usher them to his ship and offer to help immediately. But first, they're going to have to convince the current spelljammer, the reluctant captain, Fel Ardra, to help them. If they're unable to get Fel to agree, then they're going to have to find someone else. But once they've done that, they can set out on the edge of wild space towards Doom Space, going the most careful way towards their next lead, Crux's old friend Topola. 
Something to take note of here is that the world is moving despite your players choosing to interact or not to interact with it. Commander Crux actually has a history on the Rock of Brawl and it will catch up with the players since they've chosen to make a friend out of him. By making a friend out of him, simultaneously they've made an enemy out of Captain Hastain, a Rhaegar who lives lavishly in the Rock of Brawl and has a history. Their spies have been spying on him and the second that they take off, Hastain will pursue them on an aesthetic, a bioluminescent jellyfish straight out of the Astral Menagerie. Hastain will try to stop them from meddling in the Xerixian Empire, and this will result in another ship combat situation. So make sure you're keeping track of hit points and the status of the ship because this could determine whether or not they make it to Topolard. They need a map. They need to be able to get to Doomspace somehow, and their only hope is through Topola's Wild Space Orrery, a, a device that allows you to see a map of Wild Space while you're in it. She'll give it to you, but you have to fight a Void Scaver called Big Mama. Another thing from Boo's Astral Menagerie. After they fight off this Scaver, Topola offers the services of a friend who may actually be able to help them get where they need to go, a potential ally and somewhat of an old flame for her, a pirate Grimzod Garganhale. Well, vampire, but no one tell the party just yet. Whether they take her advice or not, the next leg of their journey leads through a cloud of debris from a space battle. A crimson flag will float around and catch on the ship, and suddenly will-o'-wisps will appear and lead them towards Grimzod's flagship, The Last Breath, which has been ripped apart by astral elves. Here, they'll meet Grimzod, a vampire who has sworn to take down the Xerixian Empire. He's a little wary of the adventurers, but convincing the crews to combine will actually help you get on your way faster. You have only a second to commemorate your victory and your alliance before the players must stop a ghost mutiny and finally help save a very important prisoner, the Princess Sidali, the daughter of the Emperor Zavon of the Xerixian Empire. Make sure that after all of that, your players level up. They deserve it. So far, the players' only hope to defeating the Astral Elves and helping out their homeworld was to join a coalition of folks against the Xerixian Empire. But when the players arrive in Doomspace, the system seems kind of on the verge of collapse. The adventurers are off to the planet Arun to find Crux's old friend and battle buddy, Warwick Blastimoff who's in charge of the coalition, who wants to take charge of the war and bring the fight to the Empire itself. But the coalition hasn't been going as well as Warwick would like, as the reach of the Xerixian Empire is strong and it seems like nobody wants to defy them. A sliver of hope may come from Bocath the Mercane, and the adventurer will enter another exploration-themed arc here on the hunt for him. Bocath is a prideful, cold, boasty character who knows just how much power he holds over all of the factions, and promises to round up the voices of those factions if the party succeeds in the battles of his arena. Your players will fight against two brogues, a Braxit, a brown and gray scaver, and a space gup, I, I mean a megapede, in order to impress Vokath and his spectators. But just as the final battle is about to end, the ceiling shatters in and a holographic version of Zeleth, Zadali's twin brother, has come to take his sister back, all while riding a young solar dragon. They have no way out, and attacking the Empire is not the smartest right now. Vokaf urges the party to comply with Zealous demands. Zadali goes with her brother, leaving a ring which may be a key player later on. After she's taken, Vokaf brings together a council and your players, in an act of goodwill and high charisma rules, will have to convince all of the factions to join together. Once they're able to, each faction will bring their own kind of ships and flavor to the mass combat that will take place once they decide to take on the Citadel. From here on out, the players are going to have to use the magic item, the Wild Space Orrery, to determine their location and also make their way across Xerix's space. But once they're able to, they're going to find themselves at the Imperial Citadel, which is not exactly expecting an attack, but is fully prepared for one, oddly enough. The battle may or may not go very well. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of creatures and dragons, apparently. 
and your players either may decide to break off and storm the Imper Imperial Citadel while they can and have a little bit of stealth to them, or they may decide to surrender. Whether or not they surrender themselves or are captured or sneak around the Citadel themselves, it all leads to the same place, the Temple of Light, where the next Emperor of Xerixis is to be declared. We all know how this ends. Zealoth has already taken the throne himself and is accusing his sister of treachery. Your players are going to have to act as champions of Zadali and fight against a Zodar in order to prove themselves and her. This fight has one outcome or the other. Be prepared to crown Zadali or Zealoth as the emperor. Either way, Zidali will betray the party as she's decided they're not really useful anymore. And that means the players are moving into the final part of their adventure, whether they destroy Xerix's space or not. If the Zodar battled for Zidali's favor is dead, well, it gets one hit point and restores your player's hit points and uses a greater restoration spell on them in order to fulfill one final wish spell. It gives them a sliver of time to use Zidali or Zealot's ring of shooting stars to basically make the final blow towards Xerixis space, defeating the Astral Elves, healing the world of those crystalline vines, and determining the future of Xerixis space and the space that is impacted by it. Either way, your players have made it to the end of their spell jamming adventure, and depending on what they choose, well, their world is either shattering into further destruction or ready to start anew. Is this the end of your party? <sighs> Absolutely not. They've scattered and gone separate ways, but the Astral Elves will always be out there wanting to exact their revenge on your players. But for now, your players did it. They've either saved their world or at least created a party that could go save others. I guess the adventure's over. Or is it? But what I do know is that this has been the adventure breakdown for the one and only Light of Xerixis. This has been Captain Lexi, signing off.